Well, I mean, the supply is not as good as we would like it in some areas. Prime Central London could still do with more stock coming to the market, and that's, a, that's an area that we concentrate on. Uh, and all indications as well, there was a fair enough balance between the amount of stock coming on and the amount of buyers looking. Uh, Tim, it's clear the government understands the importance of getting the property market moving again. There are all sorts of reasons why people should be helped with their decisions to move and move on in their lives. Um, one of those uh, things the government could do would be around the tax rates. Do you see any likelihood that there will be adjustment in taxes on property transactions and potentially that they might remove the second home tax? Well, uh, that we have to be optimistic about that. I mean, it will be something that will fuel the kickstart of the market if that was to happen, uh, and we would be fully supportive of it. Uh, there's no doubt that in, in, in the main we have a housing crisis in the UK and it needs it something well before the COVID lockdown uh, to reignite it so we can cater for a wider audience. So, yes, and I think also once we can open up the travelling aspect of our international buyers being able to come back into the UK, they are also going to want to be enticed uh, to why London or other parts of the UK are appetising. Mm. So uh, a, a tax break, especially on the investment side, would certainly help. Tim, I want to ask about the uh, potential change in preference for locations after the pandemic, because people working from home now uh, clearly have seen that the benefit of working from home and a lot of people have expressed the desire to continue to do so once the pandemic is behind us. How do you see this shifting demand for housing outside of the main cities in the UK? Again, slightly early to tell. I think people have been generally frightened uh, by living in a concentrated mass. Uh, we haven't seen yet a huge surge of people saying that they want to move from London or from the regions uh, further out into the country. Uh, it's, it's time will tell. I mean, if we look at the inquiries that we've received since last Wednesday, there have been a few. Many people wanting actually to rent first in the country before they buy. Uh, and we might see a slight spike on the rental side more on the sales side. Tim, I want to go more short term with my question, if I can, because in the immediate future, it seems very hard to get these physical viewings happening. What You've got a lot of people in lockdown still remote working, kids not back at school, so they're in their homes. Actually, practically having someone to come in and physically view the property is a stretch at this point, and it doesn't feel as though these online viewings that many of the estate agents have been offering will be enough to get sales across the line. What do you make of that physical challenge at this point? Well, the virtual view, as you say, has seen a, a, a big spike. Uh, again, a lot of the international buyers, especially when they're buying new developments, do tend to buy off plan without seeing anything. Um, at the moment, what we're doing is preparing all of our staff uh, and all of our offices for, for the eventuality that we're going to be able to cater for uh, two people per one household to be able to do a viewing. Uh, some of the instructions that we have on the market at the moment are vacant, so that won't be posed too much of a problem. But for the other instructions, we'll be going round to the property, uh, with the buyer, uh, we will be doing a strict analysis uh, of the people that are coming to show properties. We'll be asking the vendors of the properties to actually leave and vacate just while we do the viewing. And obviously, we'll be using the appropriate PPA and sanitizers uh, available uh, and following the guidelines that have been put in place since last Wednesday.